Cambrial Rebuild is a massive community modding project more than 22 years in the making that aims to expand the game world of The Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind by adding the missing mainland of the province. The mod is released sequentially as a series of fully realized expansions that add new landmass along with all interior locations, NPCs, dialogue and tons of quests. 22 years, that is insane. It is one of the most incredible community initiatives for any video game and I feel this has to be recognized by the video games industry and the team should get an award or something. To go at it for so long and to lovingly create the province of Morrowind takes some dedication, organization and perseverance. Uh, as I enjoy the stunning map of Morrowind created by the Tamriel Rebuild team, I'm excited to see what's in store for 2024 and beyond. And that is exactly what we will do in this month's update. So get some green tea, join me as we go through a wonderful write-up by the devs about their upcoming release known as The Grasping Fortune. Alright, so here we go. Uh, this is the blog blog entry by the Tamriel Rebuild team and it says Grasping Fortune Teaser. Uh, I think this city is Narciss. I think so. Having given you the time to digest the Andaram expansion that came out last October, it's easy to tease you with what we are up to next. Introducing Grasping Fortune. This massive expansion will extend the available mainland all the way to Morrowind's southwestern border with Cyrodiil and will bring you Narsis, the capital of House Lalu and one of the most, one of Morrowind's prime cities. So this uh, is the map of the region that will be released. So as you see here, Narsis, the giant city is right here. And if you look at uh, the text here, it says the ma a map of the playable area to be added in Grasm Fortune. This, this entire section. The colors correspond to different regions. Um, blue for Anthirin. So blue. This section is Anthirin. Um, okay. Mao for Otralith Woods. So all of this is the Otralith Woods. Spectacular region of uh, Morrowind. Um, yellow for Koronati Basin. So this yellow is the Koronati Basin. You have the lake or the river here. And and then tan for Shipalshin. I love this name, Shipalshin, tan. This uh, is a desert area. Next, if we move to the inset, this is the inset here. This is Vardenfell, right? And all of this light gray area is out. The first thing that caught my attention was how the region of this release looks like the map of Texas. I can easily assume the towns of uh, Amarillo and Lubok uh, in uh, here, right here, the northern part. Uh, it's uncanny, man. The uh, dark grey areas are still pending. The major cities of Tyr, which is right here, uh, Blacklight, which is at the northwestern corner, and Necrom, which is somewhere here. All of these large cities will come later. Now, let's examine the map. This is a stunning map created by the Tamriel Rebuild team. The entire province of Morrowind with all the towns, the large cities, and the point of interest. It's a stunning, stunning map. This release of Tamriel Rebuild will have cities of Narsis, Al Luwal, Lerin Hul, and Shipal Sharai. Of course, Narsis is the biggest city, which is located in the Dishan region of southern Morrowind. Uh, to the north of the city, you find Lake Koronati, this giant lake here. And Narsis is going to be a huge metropolis as per this legend. Um, the equivalent cities of that scale may be Vivek City, Ebenhart. So yeah, the scale of uh, Narsis is going to be insane. Uh, of course, in the third era, Narsis was the epicenter of House Lalu operations. And the house uh, controlled everything from Balmora to Suran, to the northeast in Warrenfell, to Ebenhart in the southern coast, and Kragenmoor in the Vallis Mountains. And at that time, their collaboration with Empire may have given them unrivaled political and economic strength. Um, but all of that changed in the fourth era when uh, we play the Dragonborn DLC of Skyrim. We meet uh, Adril Arano in Raven Rock in Sol's time, and we get to know that House Lalu was no longer recognized as a great house and was dismissed from the council. So a lot of changes in 200 years time. But of course, in the third era, when we are playing Tamriel Rebuild, House Lalu are at their peak and Narsis must be really grand looking. 
Um, this release also goes all the way down to the border of Argonia in the south. So if you look at this red line, uh, that is the Argonia border. And uh, after 22 years, for the first time, uh, Tamil Rebuild team has reached the border of Argonia. Congratulations to the team. That's an amazing uh, milestone. And uh, of course, uh, the Grasping Fortune region will also have a border to Cyrodiil in the west. Uh, as you see, you have the Septim's Gate Pass here. So this is a huge region with lots and lots to find, explore. Once it's out, we really, really will have a great time exploring this amazing region of uh, Morobin. Especially uh, the Shipal Sharai region. You'll see, it's stunning. Alright, the dev says this will be one of the largest and most content-rich expansions we will have attempted. But the good news is that the pace of development on this has been quite fast. To see what you have coming your way, read on. Alright. Nasus. The highlight of this expansion is surely Nasus, the second biggest city in Morobin and possibly the richest sprawling across a mesa on the upper Thur. Yeah, so um, this river is the Thur river, right? Flows all the way here. Where the great river first becomes navigable. Okay, Nasus has uh, long been a bit of a holy grail for Tamil Rebuilt ever since Prometheus, a, a talented early level designer first designed a monumental iteration of it in 2004. Okay, beset by technical and conceptual issues, the city has been remade three times over the course of two decades, but it is now finally well on its way to release. Looking across Nasus market quarter towards the council quarter. And look at the canyons, man. This is definitely in the very arid region of Morrowind. We've never seen Morrowind with a true desert environment with canyons. Uh, this will be spectacular, wow. This is a beautiful image. Narsis is the capital of Great House Lalu, possibly the preeminent faction in the late Third Era Morobin. Hence, the council quarter on top of Narsis Central Mesa hosts the Grand Measure Hall, the headquarters of House Lalu and all its Byzantine bureaucracy. The bustling market quarter also holds the headquarters of the Lalu Council Company, an entity that consolidates House Lalu's considerable trade power for dealings outside of the province, holding major interests in Cyrodiil and Argonia. Ah, so they have a house, Lalu Council Company, something like the East Empire Company. Uh, the many branches of Clan Lalu make their home in opulent manors across the city, while the disgraced Duke of Narsis stews in, cattle, in Castle Narsis, just outside the city's boundaries. Now, why is he disgraced? Hmm, interesting. Oh, this, uh, this is a stunning image. Look at the chandeliers and the carpets. Oh. Is this a carpet? What is this? <laughs> it looks grand, man. Love it. The candle, the lighting, the atmosphere is so cool. Nasus Measure Hall, the seat of Lalu Power. Interior level design by Fremenik. Wonderful stuff, Fremenik. This is, this is stunning. Great work. Headquarters of House Lalu. And the bureaucracy sits here. The dark side of House Lalu is its connections to the Kamona Tong. Oh, uh, what? Kamala Tong are the most xenophobic people in Morobin and House Lalu are extremely tolerant, you know, and they have great relations with the empire. So how can these two be related? I don't get it. Their influence goes deep inside the city among countless business ventures controlled by the Tong associates. And the most conspicuous is the council quarter casino where rich outlanders are fleeced for all their worth. The Tong's more sordid dealings happen in the labyrinthine sewers that run below the entire city for what seems like miles. Uh, the, imp the Imperial Consulate in Nasus cons Council Quarter. Ah, so the Imperials have their presence here. Of course, they need to be here, right? A grand building for them and their staff is uh, perfect. Very well done. But interesting thing is, uh, it doesn't have uh, an Imperial fort-based architecture. They seem to have blended uh, this imperial building or maybe it was gifted by the House Lalu to the Imperials. Very cool. In spite of the outlander hating Tong, oh yeah, we were talking about that, Nasus is fully steeped in the empire, of course. As mentioned in the apocryphal Skeleton Man interview from 1999, Nasus is the seat of the proconsul, an, impor an important if ineffectual imperial appointee who plays a large role in Morobin's bureaucracy of government, often squabbling with King Helseth in Almalexia on the particular division of responsibilities. Oh yeah, King Helseth is the puppet installed in Monhold 
but it's called Amalexia. He is the son of uh, the legendary Berenzia, right? So Berenzia was with the Tiber Septim. I, I'm not sure if Berenzia will be seen in Tamriel Rebuilt when we visit Am Amalexia. I'm not sure. Of course, the Imperials at this time have given autonomy to Morrowind and uh, more, most of the power is with the Tribunal, right, at this time. But this guy is just uh, maybe a conduit between the Tribunal and the Empire. But uh, great, great to see all of these guys again. The Narsis Arena, interior level design by Vern and CWK. Cool man. Interior shell model by Shivatheo. Aside from the Imperial government, the semi-private East Empire Company has one of its most important chapters here, directing overland trade between Nibane and Morobin. Of course, these guys had to be here. <laughs> Countless merchants pass through the Grand Bazaar in Market Quarter, prof proffering wares from all corners of Tamriel. Many of these outlanders had settled permanently, making their home in the giant foreign quarter, which hosts some of the province's most important guild halls for the mages and the fighters' guild, and many other besides. Those faithful to outlander gods have come together to outfit the lavish Chapel of Zenithar in the same quarter. The Chapel of Zenithar. Hmm. The middle level of the Grand Bazaar in Narsis Market Quarter. The little people of Narsis are often employed as dock hands on the waterfront, always busy with ships loading and unloading for the trips for the trip up to up the third. Oh I can imagine the docks must be like super busy. So you have the docks here, you can uh, transport goods all the way to Alluwal, Othmura, all the way up to Almalaxia, Oleven Heart, and even Vivek. Or you get goods from um, Warrenfell that can enter the Thur River and enter the Lake Koranati and drop goods off here and then transport the goods via this road to the Septim Gate Pass to Cyrodiil. Amazing. They often have to make their home in the scrummy apartment towers in the Kamonotong dominated St. Philoth Quarter. Uh, among their fav few entertainments are sermons in one of Nasus' two important tribunal temples of fights in the imposing Narsis arena where ventures too may try their luck. The Narsis sewers by Aveno, Bero, Obsidian, Khazar and Vern all compiled into a construction set image by Aveno. And this doesn't even include the catacombs. Ooh, so you have the Narsis city at the top, then you have the sewers, so huge. And then you have the catacombs. Ooh, wonder what is in the catacombs. Okay, the truly squalid denizens of Narsis find their way into the labyrinthine sewers, often becoming victims to the several criminal gangs that contest the city's underworld. A few unlucky ones will stumble into the old catacombs which intersect the sewers, uh, the most ancient part of the city, by tradition dating back to Veloth's time, now full of undead dangers. Ooh, the, so the catacombs will have undeads and the sewers will have common uh, or criminal gangs. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at this image, man. Isil Strider. Uh, canyon walls, desert atmosphere. Oh, Narsis is going to be spectacular. Crossing the third to the Narsis foreign quarter. Okay, they have a foreign quarter too. Hmm, Shivatiyo. Considering all the above, you may already be wondering about performance in such a large city. Cough, Old Ebenhardt, cough. I'm sure something bad happened uh, <laughs> at Old Ebenhardt. Fear not. Chef's restrained and clever level design allows us to pack the city with more content than any other locale in Morrowind so far all without melting your computer. Thanks to the central mesa, few sightlines will have you rendering the whole city on the screen not at once. Not only that, the city is left to breathe, eschewing the performance killing overcluttering that prior settlements, that prior settlements from Tamil Rebuilt have typically suffered from. At least in the current stage of development, the performance in Narsis promises to be at least reasonable for most players. Alright, Shepal Shin. Narsis is surrounded on three sides by Morrowind's southernmost biome, the Shepal Shin region the most arid locale in Morobin. This reddish desert forms the border both with Argonia and Cyrodiil. Although the Thur sources itself between the mesas, only a few scraggly plants survive here under the hot sun. Wow, we have never seen uh, such a biome, desert biome Morobin man. I don't know, I have never seen it. <laughs> this is so exciting, Shepal Shin. So approaching the town of Shipal Sharai through the canyons of Shipal Shin. Exterior level design by Fust Thal. 
Heaven Lee and Phoenix 12. Screenshot by Shiva Theo. Great stuff, guys. This looks amazing. Just imagine walking in this canyon. Walking in the canyon towards a small town, Shipal Sharai. So Shipal Sharai is right in. It's near Nasus, right? If you look at it. Oh yeah. So in the desert. So this is all the desert region. So Shipal Sharai. If you look at the scale. Is a town, right? It's a town. Whereas Nasus is a metropolis. It's a small town here, Shibal Sharai. Very cool. All right. Millennia ago, millennia ago, the Shibal Shin used to be inhabited by the Morovan Nedis, primordial human humans, whose distant descendants may now be found in the arch archipelago of Katunakwe in the. Padomaic Ocean. Ooh, Catherine Quay. So this uh, is a beyond was a beyond Skyrim project that got shut down. So unfortunately, there was a beyond uh, Skyrim Catherine Quay project, but unfortunately, it wound up. Okay, only a few burial ghouls and cave paintings remain of these people. Ooh, so you have some ancient cave paintings of a civilization that was lost long time back. I love it, man. Great. Um, in explicable cliff art left behind by the Morovan Nedis. So this is cliff art, exterior des level design by Phoenix Twelve. Really cool. It's great, right? I mean, if you if you're developing a region, it's also important to to have something to wonder about. This painting is from maybe five thousand years ago, a lost civilization. Uh, we have many such on Earth, so I'm sure Nern will have lost civilizations too. It's really cool that the Timely Rebuild team is actually featuring the Nidis and their art. Now, the arid canyons are inhabited by a couple of caravan outposts and what, of what few Lalu farmers and ranchers manage to eke out a living here. Much better acclimatized are the Srinati, Dharma nomads with, with a complicated relationship to House Lalu. What? Nomads? Like the Ashlanders? Wow. Although they bear many, many similarities, the Srinati differ from the Ashlanders by adopting the material culture of the surrounding settled folk as needed, even the Imperials. They herd their sand coons, ride their trusty Sharai hoppers, and will happily both guard and raid caravans, depending on circumstance. Oh, okay, raid. Yet, even they steer clear of the nasty Skyrenders or the powerful horned butchers that stalk the canyons. What is this sky render? <laughs> I don't get that. So this is a camp. Okay, what does it say? A camp of the Shinati nomads. I wonder if these uh, nomads are joinable and we can actually talk to the uh, wise woman or whatever, the equivalent. And we can uh, do stuff for them. That'll be cool. Exterior level design by Joan AC. Very cool work, Joan. Okay, aside from Narsis, the only other town in the region is Shipal Sharai, a once prosperous caravan sarai uh, with the continuing decay of Mir Korup. Oh yeah, Cyrodiil. This town was is in Cyrodiil and in Project Tamriel, if you see the Project Tamriel map, you can see Mir Korup, which should be somewhere here, right in Cyrodiil. Um, so with the continuing decay of Mir Korup across the border in Cyrodiil, the trade route through Shipal Sharai has lost much of its importance and the town has entered into decline. As the Lalu governor remains preoccupied with their own mysterious affairs, it's up to the small Imperial Legion garrison to try to keep things together. Nice town, smack in the middle of the desert. <laughs> Canyon. Love it. The town of Shipal Sharai, exterior level design by Fusthal. By Fusthal. Heavenly and Phoenix 12. Beautiful guys, looks amazing. We've never seen such a town in a canyon like this. Wow. Exciting. Hiding among the canyons are many points of interest for, for would-be adventurers. Two Septimite Imperial forts, outposts, guarding the passes out of the province. A temporal monastery, a temple monastery celebrating the source of the Third River. A ruin of the Barbasaic Aelids. Ooh, these guys are from Agonia, right? That once ruled the adjacent corner of Black Marsh. An abandoned fortress of the Raymond Empire from the first era. Oh, Raymond Empire, okay. This is an abandoned fortress from the first era. That's amazing. 
and a massive Velothi Tower complex taken over as headquarters for Janata Crime Syndicate. This sounds like uh, Argonia people. Oh, look at the screenshot, man. This doesn't this remind you of Fallout New Vegas? Cactus and oh, really cool. Wow. Looking across Chipal Shin towards the Cyrodiil border, exterior level design by Dark Knight comes. Spit, <laughs> Chef, and Mojo 187. Wow, this is some, if they can give you the Fallout New Vegas feel, nothing like it. So exciting. Coronati Basin. Coming together with grasping fortune is a reminder of the Coronati Basin region surrounding the Lake Coronati, known from the Vanilla Book 2920, last year of the first era, and constituting the middle run of the Thur River, seen already in the Andaram expansion last October. The shores of the Thur crowd with thick mushroom mangroves here, surrounded by yellow semi arid fields. So, the Coronati region, so this, I think, this part of the map. Altha Vathor, a small Dedic ruin in the eastern Kuranati Basin. Exterior level design by Chef. A Dedic ruin, cool. I wonder who is the Dedic prince here. Many Lalu towns dot the riverside here. The most prominent of those, Lerinhul, <laughs> Hemlin Keep from Arena. Ah, so this, this was a town in Arena. Home to the Lalu councillor, Ivul Lerin, a rich and powerful from le levies imposed on those trading on those travelling the Kanet River up to the Otherloth Woods. So, this is the Kanet River, I assume. And Otherloth Woods is somewhere here. Okay. The prosperous town also includes the Imperial Legion garrison, a fighter's guild chapter and a chapel of Dibella. Oh, nice. A scene in Lerin Hull, another Halalu town. Exterior level designed by Nemon, Nomi and Chef. Looks great, guys. I like this bridge. If you're looking for the local Majors Guild chapter, there is one in the slightly smaller town of Otmura, just down, down river. Once a fishing village that has recently been seen a boom in trade and construction. Then on the eastern bank, there is Sadrathim, a small village governed by the Sions of House Sadras, most notable for including a chapel of Stendar frequented by converts among the local populace. The town of Otmura, exterior level design by Nemon. So, it has a ship and a dock. Otmura is right here. So, I, I'm assuming you can you can take a boat from Otmura to Alluwal, to Lerenhul and Narsis. While not quite the locus of political intrigue like the Antherian region out to its north, survival of the Redoran, Alluwal, Almarak, a double fortress on the exit from Lake Coronati, ensures a steady low level conflict between houses. Lalu and Redran in the Bizen. In fact, this whole area along with the neighboring Otralith woods was once part of the vast Redran water march. Through centuries, the Lalu managed to flip nearly all of the old Redran bannermen in, south in southwest Morobin. Yet, the old marsh capital still stands proud, unwilling to give in. Oh, so you actually have a Redran um, stronghold right here in, in Lalu territory. Interesting. Skylamp mounts await their Redran masters in the fortress of Almarak. Skylamp Mounts. Wow, what is this? I mean, those who have played Damned Rebuilt might know what this is, but I've never, never played it. So, interesting. Exterior level design by Merial, Rats, Chef, and Nemon. So, Al Luval is the Red Ran place, right smack in Lalu territory. Interesting. You'll see a different architecture in this town compared to all the Lalu cities. The player can help the Rodoran Lord of Marsh sustain their precarious grip on the fortress or side with Lalu to further undermine what's left of the water's march. Better yet, help the temple ensure the little people of al are taken care of while the great houses squabble or take advantage of distractions to help the Janata Syndicate expand the criminal operations at the expense of said populace. Oh, super cool. You can take the side of Lalu, you can take the side of the Rodoran people or you can take the side of uh, the temple and watch the fight. Or you can um, be a bad guy and help the Janata Syndicate. <laughs> I love it. Very interesting. Looking across Lake Kronati. Stunning. Look at this image, man. Bellissimo. Mwah. Love it. 
Exterior level design by excuses and accusations. Chisero, Chef, Nemon, Nomi, Minor Man, Nirvayan, and others. Oh, that's an amazing uh, teamwork. This must be a beautiful place, Karunati. Wow. Okay. Uh, once stated to release in what became the Andalam expansion, this part of the Karunati Basin was punted over into Grasping Fortune a couple of years back in order to give the many towns of the mid Middle Thur a proper political gravity centre in the city of Narsis. This way, local quest lines in these relatively quaint towns have to do less heavy lifting, leaving the tricky intrigue to Narsis. Okay, miscellaneous. Among a grab bag of various items stuck into Grasping Fortune will be a substantial sliver of the lush, yet alien, Autolith Woods region, also seen in Andaram and a slew of smaller pieces of new content. Cool. Look at this Autolith Woods of this uh, of the region in this uh, release. So this pink area, this will have the Autolith Woods feel. It's totally different, right? It's, it's totally different from Shepal Shara, totally different from the Koronati region. It's like you're entering a completely different game. A rainy day in the Autolith Woods, exterior level design by Gnomi and Chef. Great stuff, guys. Old Eben Heart is slated to get a few tweaks too. Marhus continues to make progress on the ambitious melee tournament and may possibly finish it in time for Grasping Fortune. Uh, they are also out overhauling the East Empire Company questline with the blessing of its former developer. Further, we wish to make some substantial dialogue alterations and a couple of interior reworks in Old Ebenhart that, that would clarify its role in provincial administration. Spe specifically, we are moving away from the old TR lore which placed Old Ebenhart as the heart of Morrowind's imperial government. Rather, that role will be given to the test three canon locations of Almalexia and Narsis, with Old Ebenhart retaining the headquarters of Morrowind's Imperial Legion. Okay, slight change in the lore. Uh, this is it for Grasping Fortune. Much like 20, our 2022 release, Embers of Empire, we have a development sidetrack wherein we aim to rework the old and new, nearly contentless Sundered Scar region with a little bit added extra. Okay, read about it in the next post. Then of course, we are working on even more than that, primarily on the rest of Morrowind's southern, southwestern quadrant, including the bulk of the Autolith Woods region and the city of Kraken Moor. We are also getting the assets and height map ready for the Clambering Moor region and the reworked Mephalan Vales. We hope to bring a more detailed overview of all of that in a month or two. What an amazing update. I absolutely loved it. Uh, thank you so much uh, for writing this uh, Sultan of Ram. Uh, your update style is so beautiful, the way you write is so cool. Uh, it really gets the excitement up. As I was reading it, I was getting so pumped, you know. I'm pumped for this. So those of you watching, I would love to read your thoughts on the Grasping Fortune teaser. And yeah, do write your thoughts in the comments below. I would love to read them all. Alright, community Q&A time. So the most important question, when would Grasping Fortune be out for release? Grasping Fortune should be out by late 2024 or early 2025. What's planned to be next after Grasping Fortune and the Narsis update? I'd imagine either the Velothi Mountains or the Southern areas under dress control, but I'm probably wrong. Basically, right now, we have three development paths. Grasping Fortune, Andrethis, Wealth Beyond Measure, Poison Song, Mephalon Vales, Almalexia, Clambering Moor, Grey Meadows. Grasping Fortunes and Clambering Moor are only one new areas in development. Poison Song is an overhaul of existing areas. Since Almalexia isn't in the mode already, it has to be added in an update after Clambering Moor. Can you guys tell me whether the updates are generally backward compatible? Will Grasping Fortune require starting a new game? New games are recommended as updates usually touch old areas as well. What is the current plan for Almalexia? In the mid to late 2010s, devs were so burned out and traumatized by the previous failed attempt at Almalexia that any resumed work on the city was pushed till the very end of the mode. But most of the folks involved in that have since gone inactive, and new people are running the show now, and we don't fear Almalexia that much anymore, especially given how well Narsis is turning out. So that's it with the update guys and now sit back, relax and enjoy the creation of the amazing Tamdale Rebuild team with Dreamtime.